Hi, everybody. Um, oh, that's nice. Wow, nice little response. Um, my name is Darius Kazemi, and uh, uh, today I'm actually, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a trend that I've seen in the last year that I'm sort of calling um, folk bots. So you're, I'm sure you have heard and you're going to hear more about um, bots for business, bots as conversational interfaces, Facebook, you know, Facebook Messenger, you can order a pizza or something on uh, uh, through there. But um, uh, what I want to do is take you through a little tour of some, uh, I want to show you some bots that are made by kind of pe pe professional programmers, people who know what they're doing. And then I want to show you a tool, and I want to show you what people who don't know how to program um, are building using this tool. I just think it's an important thing to be aware of if you want to be aware of what creativity on the internet is uh, today. So, um, oh, well, the, hold on, let me make sure I get my window the right size. There we go. Um, okay, so I've been making bots mostly on Twitter since 2012. Um, uh, some of my bots uh, um, do fairly mundane things. Uh, this one's called Museum Bot, and all it does is every four hours, or every, yeah, roughly every six hours, uh, it tweets a piece from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, high, nice high resolution photo, and then you can go and check it out um, at the museum website. Uh, this, is, this is almost a bot as like an RSS feed. It's like a replacement for an RSS feed. It, um, uh, it sits in your Twitter stream, and uh, the thing that I like about it is if you're like me and you're on Twitter all day and you see bad news and all sorts of things that, you, that sort of drain you, um, it's nice every now and then to get a little piece of uh, culture in your feed. And, uh, uh, and one of the things that I like about these curators is that they pick things that you might not necessarily expect, uh, you know, a human wouldn't curate. Like, here's a transverse flute in C. Uh, wow, okay, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, pieces of, of mitts, of gloves, uh, some arrowheads. Uh, you know, there's 450,000 items in this deep back catalog of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They probably only show a few hundred um, pieces at a time, uh, and they, there are many pieces that they'll never show. And so this is just a way to, to curate and go through that. Um, a different form of curation that is a little bit more abstract is this bot I made called Very Old Tweets. And what it does is it, it retweets one of the first 7,500 tweets ever made, and it just does that forever. Just setting up my Twitter, back when Twitter was spelled T-W-T-T-R, you know, nice temp, still drinking at Magnolia in the hate. <laughs> Here's Jack, home in hot shower, then tomato soup. Um, and uh, what I like about this is it's almost like a, like a, like a time machine. Um, uh, people use Twitter very differently in March of 2006. Uh, this actually spans March, April, and May of 2006. That's how the first 7,500 tweets took three months to come into existence because it was being used so infrequently and mostly by early Twitter employees. Uh, and then there's some, there's some, it's funny, you see who's on this and you go, oh yeah, founder of Twitter, founder of Twitter, Twitter founder's sister, you know, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and so this is a very old tweet. And this is interesting because it only retweets other tweets. It's not generating content, much like the Metropolitan Museum of Art uh, bot there. Um, it's simply uh, uh, promoting existing content. Um, on the theme of curation, I'm going to show bots that I've made, I'm going to show bots that other people have made too. Um, perhaps my favorite bot ever made uh, is called Pentametron uh, by Ranjit Bhatnagar. Um, and what this does is it finds tweets that are written in the iambic pentameter uh, blank verse in English, uh, and it finds ones that rhymes but that rhyme, and it turns them into a poem. Tomorrow's gonna be a better day. I'll find another you another way. These feelings shouldn't matter anymore. I'm gonna buy a gun and start a war. I'm sick and people aggravating me. I really want a little Christmas tree. I have the biggest headache ever, yo. I'm still accepting sugar daddies, though. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and this just, uh, so, so just every few hours it retweets a couplet like this uh, into, your, into your Twitter feed. Uh, and it's amazing, and I'm really, uh, it's, been, it's been going since March 2012. It's been one of my favorite things on Twitter since then. And what this is doing is it's, is it's recontextualizing language that people use in their day-to-day -day life and finding the accidental poetry in it. Um, specifically, iambic pentameter in English is um, uh, notable because it's a very common rhythm in English speech. Um, it's one of the reasons why it was such a popular form of poetry. Uh, and so this just, I think, really smartly uh, sort of seizes on what's interesting about iambic pentameter. The best part about being subscribed to this Twitter bot is um, I notice iambic pentameter in, in my life whenever I see it now. I'll see, I'll see a billboard and it says, you know, uh, it said, it'll say, it'll be selling me a hamburger or something. And I'm like, ah, that's an iambic pentameter. So it sort of changes the way that I see uh, the rest of the world. Um, this is a bot that I made uh, in August 2014 uh, called Reverse OCR. Uh, and what this does is it's actually uh, based on an optical character recognition library. Uh, so for example, I might say, uh, hello. It's hard to draw with a trackpad. Uh, and then it tries to, to figure out what that is. I don't know if you can see up there. I'll make it bigger. It, it's it's uh, H-E something L space O. Okay, I mean, that's, that's pretty close. And I did put the O kind of far away. I bet if I put another, maybe another E in there. Yeah, there it is. There's the E. So um, I was playing with this one day, and I realized that this is, uh, it's still, it's not great. It's not, it's not very good. If I, if I try to write a, um, a cursive H, uh, it thinks that's a capital A, you know. Um, and so what I did was I built something that just makes squiggles, random squiggles, uh, and it tries to interpret those as letters. It thinks that is a G. Uh, it's, it thinks that's an S. You can see that's got kind of an S shape to it. Uh, maybe that's, a, yeah, three like that. And you can, you can spend a lot of time looking at these things, trying to figure out where that, like, that's a V. It clearly figured that out from there. There's our U, there's a parentheses. Um, and so what reverse OCR does is it picks a word, and it does this approximately half a million times until it finds matching letters for each Word. Here's corpus. C. That's pretty good. O. R. P. U. S. Yeah, okay, fine. Calamity. Buddha. Uh, lineman. Um, and, I, and I like this one because it's a, it's a sort of provides a, a different way of, of seeing um, some of these words. In fact, um, some of these bots live both on um, Twitter and Tumblr. And I actually like how it looks on Tumblr. It just gets this nice uh, sort of grid going. I'm going to skip this one. Um, here's another one that I made. So I've shown, you, I've shown you textual bots. There are also bots that use media on Twitter and other places. This is one I made called Glitch Logos. Um, it takes famous logos and uh, in, in SVG format and messes up the coordinates and creates stuff like this. That's the target logo, CIA, Whole Foods, Sony. I like this one, Sony. Um, here's another image bot. This one's by Brian Moore, who's one of my favorite recent bot creators. Um, uh, this one is doing something that I've seen, uh, and I've done a lot myself, where you find something that humans are doing in real life that is repetitive, and, um, uh, and then you just do it, have the bot do it instead. So the bot just generates culture. Um, and so this is kind of a joke. Uh, you know, people like to take the, the golden rectangle, the golden spiral, and, and put it on anything. It's actually fairly... Um, uh, um, uh, it's a, if you're familiar with the concept of, uh, of apophenia, 
Uh, that's the psychological um, uh, need to find patterns in noise. So when we look at the night sky and we see constellations and we see a bull and we see a hunter, um, that's apophenia. Our brains just do that because they're pattern matching machines. And so one of the things that people like to do is find the golden rectangle in anything. And so this just takes random pictures and just puts the golden rectangle on it somewhere. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> See, great. Yeah. Um, uh, so those are some, some image bots. Oh, you know, I guess I'll show this other bot too. This is one I made called Miraculous Pictures. Uh, are you familiar with those um, history in pictures accounts on Twitter? They, they, they show famous photos from history. Oh, here's, you know, Jackie Onassis meeting, uh, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali or something, and they're shaking hands, and it shows you the picture, and you go, oh, wow, that's history. That's really cool. Uh, the problem with those uh, Twitter accounts is that they're often wrong. They're often very wrong. There are great accounts that are just dedicated to debunking the pictures in there. No, that's not Audrey Hepburn. That picture was taken in 2001. It's just in black and white, and it's this ballerina named so-and-so. Um, so what I did was um, I took the uh, the the um, captions from these and then just put them with random pictures. Uh, Infinity Stone. Uh, that one didn't have a caption. Eight hard facts about erections that every guy needs to know. Uh, spreading the love one flower at a time. Clear waters. Um, this one was interesting because it was attempting to, to make fun of a, um, of a phenomenon that I was seeing where people were, um, uh, uh, were putting fake um, sort of attributions to pictures. And uh, what I found out, much to my surprise, is that um, content farms picked up on this account and they started doing this kind of thing in order to get clicks. So there are Twitter accounts now called like lol so random and if you go to them it's this but it's done by a human and it's like you know uh, and it's it's the exact same thing but it's people copying the bot because they want to get Twitter traffic is very strange. Um, there's been great work with video recently. Um, this is freeze frame bot uh, by Brian Moore uh, as well. Uh, let me see if I can find a good one here. Um, sure. Is this, uh, oh, I'm not, oh, right, I'm not getting audio here. Um, well, the effect is not so good without audio, so maybe I'm just going to skip this one, sorry. But here's another video bot um, uh, that I've done that doesn't need audio. It's called um, uh, This Summer Bot. This was a collaboration with um, uh, Duncan Robson, who's a video artist. And what Duncan did was he took, um, he went, he went and looked at movie trailers, and he took every little piece of text out from these movie trailers and clipped them into their own files and just categorized them in a little database. And he started manually putting them together into supercuts that would sort of make funny sentences. And he reached out to me and asked if I could help turn this into a bot, and so that's what we did. Um, take a shot. Oh, oh, hey, I have audio now. Wow, thank you. Um, let me see if I can take a shot. This fall, the ex is getting a new partner, has a new name, okay. Sometimes you have to go home, but there's been one small mistake. This fall, best friends get lost. One night, one group of unlikely heroes needs a job. This season, fall in love through their eyes. And uh, finally, coming this spring, the love that brings us together, that shocked the world, will free him forever for love. So, um, uh, I will show that other bot now, I guess, since I can get some audio. This one's great, this one came out just a few weeks ago. Um, here's one. Oops. Option, same wire, 
that's hurting you. So their options <laughs> to tell you. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Himself go maybe five years ago. <laughs> what would you say? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up. And in it this just situation. goes on. Every time I see it, I can't get enough of it. Um, TV comment bot by David Lublin um, is a is a bot and a performance. Uh, it, it's actually watching TV all the time in his house. If you go to his home in Brooklyn and you sit on his couch, he has six or seven different TVs, and they're all connected to a bunch of video hardware, and there's a computer in the middle that's watching all these different channels. And while it's watching these channels, it's doing image recognition on what it thinks it sees in each frame. And then Dave has these streams of text. He'll have a bunch of horror text or a bunch of... Um, uh, erotic fiction or a bunch of uh, Shakespearean uh, plays and it replaces nouns in these source texts with what it thinks it sees on the screen. So uh, let's see, for example, um, crystals are slightly foggy and fountain up into a white sticky planetarium form. It thinks this is a planetarium, which I guess is not too far off. Um, enjoy snowplow responsibly. It sees vehicles, it sees snow, it thinks it's a snowplow. Um, it thinks this is a rickshaw, um, a church, a veranda. Okay, pretty close. Um, and one of the things I love about this is that it's a performance in addition to a bot running. Um, uh, Dave actually manually, he's just, whenever he happens to be watching TV, this bot runs. And while he's watching TV, he watches six TVs at a time, and he just presses a button whenever he sees something that he thinks is worth tweeting from one of the, uh, uh, from one of the bots that's running. So that's a, that's, this is an example of a, of a human curated bot. So the, the bot is coming up with all the content, and there's just a human going, yeah, let's post this one. Now let's post this one. Let's post that one. Um, the last thing I want to show is just some generative... Uh, Poetry. Uh, a lot of these are made by uh, my good friend Allison Parrish. Um, these uh, generate tweets uh, inspired by the minimalist poetry of Aram Saroyan. Um, and, and I just love these. I love um, how they come up with this sort of concrete uh, poetry. Um, and it's, again, it's just something that I like having. And I love, I love um, bots that generate... Uh, literature and poetry. Here's another one from Allison. This one takes um, the Museum of Modern Art's uh, database of their entire collection and posits new works of art in new mediums. Uh, so for example, head feet, headpiece, folio space, 1992, eight reproductions in etching paper. Um, where's a good one? Um, right, Fluxus West, 2008, metal rods with pressure sensitive tape to yellow paper. And I love, this one's my favorite. Standard Deck, 1995. Two etchings and a calendar with photographic or photomontage illustrations on translucent paper and three wood engravings. Okay. And here's one more poetry bot. This one's called the Ephemerides. Um, it builds poetry and then accompanies it with imagery from NASA. Uh, he was three feet below the surface of the surface and staked them in to prevent time. It is up the influence for beautiful blue color of it is suddenly, of it is beyond paddle suddenly, and so forth. Now, so these are, these are bots that are all made by people who are programmers, who are artists, who, who, who work in this space and sort of consider it their primary artistic um, medium. Uh, but I want to talk to you about folk bots today. So this is kind of setting up the foil um, uh, for these other bots. How many, has anybody in here heard of cheap bots done quick? No one. Go, okay, one person, good. Um, so cheapbotsdonequick.com is a tool um, by uh, George Buckingham, who's based in London. And what this does is it lets people create Twitter bots without necessarily needing to program. All you need is to create a Twitter account for the bot and then sign in. 
I'm signed in on this other um, page here. Um, so what I want to do is just show you this in action so that you can understand the tools that these people are working with. And then I want to show you what people have done with cheap bots done quick. Um, so this uses something called Tracery by Kate Compton. It's not important to really know exactly what Tracery is other than it's, it, is, it is what's called an expansion grammar. Uh, so I, and I, the best way to do it is just to show you this in action. So this is, this is a JSON formatted object here. Again, doesn't really matter if you know what that is or not. Um, and it just says origin hello. And if I scroll down here, here let me make this a little smaller. There we go. Okay, it says hello at the bottom. Can you see what's at the bottom there? It says hello. Okay, um, of course I can say hello there. Now it says hello there. That's not very interesting. Um, one thing that is interesting is I can hit the tweet button here, and this is tied to a test account that I have here. If I reload the page, it says hello there. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let's say hello there people. I'm putting it in between pound signs there. Everyone, people, humans. And now it says, hello there, everyone. Hello there, people. Hello there, humans, and so on. Um, and so what this is doing is it says, OK, I'm going to say, hello there, people. But I don't know what people is, so I'm looking for people here. And now I'm going to pick something at random from this list here. Now, this on its own can get you a lot of places. Um, for example, um, this is a very popular bot that's made in cheap bots done quick. It is called Think Piece Bot. And what it does is it comes up with headlines. Candy Crush is objectively bad. Why youths are ruining the Warren Harding error and everything else. Five reasons why the youths won't have landlines. Is China to blame for the decline in military enlistment? Laws is danger to safety. Why we have Obama to thank for the singular they. What would Mark Twain think of Hamlet? Young people are ruining the hookup culture industry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so this is, uh, this is like the game um, Mad Libs, if you're at all familiar with it. You can take pieces of language and combine them in different ways. Um, and there are a lot of bots that are based on this. However, you don't have to just do language. There are bots like Infinite Deserts, which creates the, these desert landscapes. And again, it just uses it doing cheap bots done quick. I don't necessarily have to use language here. I can simply say, I can make my origin this. I can do, I can put some trees in the landscape, I can make a tree, and oh, I don't know, for, uh, okay, those are some bad trees, but you get the idea, now there's different landscapes being made here. And of course, if you take that to its, you know, you use fun Unicode characters and all that, you can create something like this. Um, you can also use emoji. This one's Tiny Gallery by uh, Emma Watson, and it just makes these little art galleries where emoji people hang out and look at emoji art. Uh, this is one of my favorites, and you can, we can see the, um, we can actually look at the source code for Tiny Gallery. This is the source code, the whole thing right here. The origin is just this, it's just the ASCII art for the, for the gallery. Those are the white walls of the gallery. These are line breaks in here to make sure the line breaks get in there. That's the art, art, art. And then there's visitors down here on the bottom. And so the visitors can be either these people in this list here or empty, blank. So sometimes you get an empty art gallery, sometimes you get different visitors. And then here's the list of emoji that can be used as art. And that's it, that's the entire source code for this bot. Um, and I think it's really fantastic. Um, on, on a similar note, this one is another popular one called uh, Choo Choo Bot, 
Uh, and it's just a train just going through different landscapes. And it's just, it's, it's curated emoji. So here's our sort of desert. There's a camel and a horse and cacti and, and that sort of thing. This one's in heaven, it looks like. There's a dog and an angel and a trumpet and stars and clouds, um, cornfields, uh, the, the seashore, turtles and pineapples and palm trees, that sort of thing, some forests. Uh, so that, and, that's, and that's Choo Choo Bot, that's all it is. People love it. It has 5,000 followers on Twitter. Um, something else that can be done in Cheap Bots Done Quick that I'll show you really quickly here is it can actually um, host uh, SVG, the graphics format. So I'm just gonna copy and paste because I don't wanna waste everyone's time here. But this is embedding the vector notation for an SVG file right here. And all this is, it's, it's a red rectangle, 200 by 200 pixels with color FF000. And oh, there it is. And if I tweet, Uh, that's white. Not sure why that showed up white. Well, bear with me here. Um, there's our red rectangle. And of course, now there's things that we can do here. Like I can make a new variable called hex. And now we have different colors going on here. Or I can Google SVG bird, find an image of a bird that I like. I can go to the Wikipedia page for that bird, and I can click on here to get the SVG file, and here's all the data for that bird. I can copy and paste that data into Cheap Bots Done Quick. And there's a bird with its head cut off. <laughs> and I could change the colors or, or do whatever else. And um, someone actually took these birds and made um, a bot called Birds on Wires. And this is all done in Cheap Bots Done Quick. We can actually see the source code here. I'll show you in a second. And it just makes these skies, these, these sunsets or sunrises or midday, uh, and it draws random wires, and then it takes SVGs of birds and puts the silhouettes right on there. Um, and here's what the source code looks like. There's a lot, there's the, there's the core right there, wire with birds, wire with birds, wire with birds, and then bird, 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 all these different birds that can be chosen. And then here's all the SVG for the birds. And again, this was just copied and pasted from, from SVGs that were already on online, and, and, and here it is. And I can just sit here and create new birds all I want. Um, similarly, we have Tiny Skylines, another SVG bot here. And my personal favorite, Soft Landscapes, which just creates these very gentle, calming, landscapes here. And what I want to, um, what I just wanted to point out to you all today is that um, this is what happens when we make tools available to people who are not necessarily technical. Um, we're starting to get a vernacular of art bots and other forms of bots. Uh, there are, there's a whole genre of what people are calling self-care bots. They just remind you to, to drink water every now and then, that sort of thing. It's, and there's tons of these. It's really funny to me, and it's really great. Um, we have a whole genre of emoji landscape bots. Um, this, is, this is culture that's being created from the ground up by people who maybe don't even necessarily know that they're creating culture. When I teach bot making and bot aesthetics to, um, to children, I give them cheap bots done quick. I can teach a, you know, a 10 year old how to make something in cheap bots done quick very quickly. Um, oh, and I forgot to point out the best part is that you can just say post every half hour 
and hit save, and then it'll just post every half hour. So you don't have to host anything or anything like that. Um, it posts on, on, your own be on its own behalf. And there's even a mode where you can have it reply to tweets. So um, that's really what I wanted to show you. I wanted to give you a sort of breadth of what artists, both professional and unprofessional, are doing here. Um, I think it's important to have a narrative that is counter to the, well, you know, bots for business, bots are the new apps, bots are this, bots are that. Bots have been this longer than they've been the new apps. Bots have been this weird kind of art thing um, for a much longer period of time in computer history than, uh, than bots have been, you know, a conversational interface for people to talk to. And these bots don't annoy people. These bots engage people. These bots keep people um, uh, uh, interested in things that are going on. Uh, and in fact, I've built these for commercial purposes as well. Um, really quickly, I can show you. Um, on our, I'll just show you. This was a part of a project that we did for um, uh, Wizards of the Coast, the people who make Dungeons and Dragons. And this was a bot where people would, if they retweeted a certain tweet, they would get a custom character portrait, one of these 200 portraits made by artists at Wizards of the Coast. Uh, and then it generates uh, a character, a little story about the character. If his ambition holds the tales of masks Stilkso, the dependable Rashemi, will be recorded in the history books. Um, these were very engaging social media campaigns for these companies. People like having things generated for them. They like having custom content. Um, in fact, these ended up being the most successful social media campaigns of all time for Wizards of the Coast. They had millions and millions and millions of engagement for what was just a, a one-week project of implementing something like this. Um, so that's, that's all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to sort of point out all this stuff. Do we have time for questions or? Okay. No? Okay. Well, yeah, you can grab me afterwards. Uh, thank you for listening.